Hi, today we're going to change the wick on this kerosene heater. Most kerosene heaters that look just like this are going to be uh, pretty much the same deal. So what I have today is a kerosene heater. I got some gloves. I got a pan that won't leak. I got a place to put my hardware. A screwdriver to match the screws here. It could be Phillips or standard. Sometimes it's two, sometimes it's four. Of course I got a new replacement wick and I read the directions and all the safety procedures so I'm going to follow all those. Don't do this if you don't feel like you can. So step one is to take out the screws that hold the top part on. <clears throat> Pop those guys off. Now we're done with the tools. It just lifts right off. Set that down someplace safe. So here is where uh, is where the action happens. This is where the fun is. They got like a button on this. You push that button and pop it off. Others, you just pop off. And then we're going to take this off. Now that it holds it on, just pop it right off. All right, and uh, if you want to wipe it down with a rag, you can, whatever. Most problems with kerosene heaters are from the kerosene, which leads to the wick being the part that you need to replace. One thing I've learned the hard way is when you replace the wick, don't pour kerosene down into it to prime it. It doesn't work. What it does is it traps air inside the wick and it ruins your wick. So don't do that. The most critical time I have found is the first time <clears throat> that you fill it up, that you wait 60 minutes or longer before you light it the first time. And if you do that right, then you don't have other problems. But if you don't do that right, you're going to have other problems. So I see now that I pull this off. What my problem here is with this wick, it's carbon buildup. So I'll just pop this guy off of here. Okay. And the wick just pulls off of there. It's got these tabs. The tabs stick in the holes. So you look inside here, you can see this wick has got all, all kinds of carbon buildup in there. And that stops the wicking action, so the kerosene can't go up through that bunch of carbon junk. And when it's down this low, dry burning it doesn't help. You see I dry burned it, and it's clean up above, but this carbon's so far down that the dry burning didn't get it out. So, if you're doing a little more research, I found that if you use some of this here uh, wick conditioner type stuff, it helps eliminate all those problems altogether. All right, so we've got a new wick here, which uh, I'm just going to compare it to this old one here, just to double check. It does look uh, pretty much the same. The holes in this one appear to be a little bit, uh, the pins seem thicker. I don't know if that is going to be a problem or not. <clears throat> we'll test fit it over here. It fits. I don't want to squish it all the way down yet because I don't want to uh, to get it wet with kerosene and have to work with it wet. So I'll just take a minute to clean off this area here. As you can see, there's some there's some carbon buildup on there. So I'm gonna kind of be careful not to let it uh, fall into the kerosene. I got all the loose stuff off. If I wasn't doing a video, I might spend a little bit more time with some steel wool and get that totally cleaned off, but um, I'm not going to make you sit through that. So, uh, you know, I'm going to keep these gloves on. This is made of fiberglass here, and this is made of cotton down here. <clears throat> so the cotton pulls the oil up and wicks it into the fiberglass, 
and then the fiberglass doesn't burn, so when you dry burn, that's why it doesn't ruin your wick. I used to think that you should never let it dry out, but that's actually the opposite. You should let it, the tank dry out, you know, let it burn until it's empty and then go out on its own uh, every three or four tanks, or even more often if you got uh, some crappy kerosene, because it burns off the carbon and it stops the flow of the kerosene. So now in here, I found this is sometimes easier to uh, get this guy upright and uh, sticking out here. So it's about halfway up, and then punch these guys, these little round things, right into those holes. All right. <laughs> Do you hear it go? Says let go of the thing. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but. We'll see if we can do it all the way down the bottom. There's one. It's just like a little, you can see there's like these slots. And at the bottom of the slot there's a little space where this pin fits in. And actually I like the way these pins fit in better than the pins from the other one. They got a, a more positive feel. The other pins kind of flop around a little bit. But this is like in there, perfect, and you know it's perfect. Okay. Kind of getting all three in is a pain. Oh, I finally did it. So then I take my hand and just kind of expand it out in there. You see, just trying to hold all these things around. And then I'll use my other hand to gently pull that over. Okay. Still pulling this down, you kind of look in here and make sure it's not getting bunched up and it's nice and smooth and pretty looking. Even. Alright, I watched the rivets as it went down to make sure they didn't uh, come out or anything like that. Probably should have oriented this first though. That would have been better. So now you know, you learn from my mistakes. That's the advantage here. We're all learning together. Or, or not. Maybe you're not learning anything at all. And you hate me and you think I've wasted your time. I hope that's not the case. So the most important thing here is to remember, don't pour any kerosene in here, fill it up, set a timer, 60 minutes, not 58 minutes. If you want to let it longer than 60 minutes, let it sit overnight, that's fine. When you're done with it for the season, burn it all the way out of kerosene and make sure you use this stuff here or something similar to it in your, uh, in your kerosene to... Uh, prevent your wick from looking like the one I pulled out of here. I um, I put another kerosene here. This is actually going to be my backup now. And I was very frustrated by all the problems I was having with this, so I did a lot of research about these bad boys. So I went from being an idiot with a kerosene heater to being somebody who knows all the ins and the outs. Not all the ins and the outs. I can heat my office without killing myself or starting a fire. You always see these in Craigslist and it's always like, needs a new wick. So now let's test it out without lighting it. It's a little tight. Man, it's really tight. Mmm. So tight it makes me think maybe something's wrong. Mm hmm. Hmm. And I was all talking myself up. All right, here we go.
hate it. I hate these things. So it raises all the way to the uppest position. We're just below that. Now that this is soaked in kerosene, it's going to get all over my hands, which is great because I love kerosene smell. Just get an electric heater. Just kidding. Mmm, tingly. It, it actually, it's tingly. And I don't like it. My hands are already dried and cracked from it being winter. somebody to do this for you. That would be, if you have like a brother-in-law or something, or a son who lives in your basement. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I mean, if my son lives in the basement, he sure is always the one doing this. All right. Remember earlier, I was like, check the rivets. It's, it's where we're at here. Now it's changed slightly. Expect your uh, your experience to be perfect, and then when it sucks, you won't be as disappointed. You'll be like, "Hey, I knew this was gonna suck." Not sure which is irritating my fingers worse, the fiberglass or the kerosene. I'm like, I don't know. What is my problem? I feel like it shouldn't be this hard. So let's see what we got here. Ooh, it's working! It's working! I'm afraid to let it go all the way down though. now. All right. So, that was a pain, but we got it done, right? I don't even know what happened to my wing nuts. There's one. There they are. So yeah, you put your wing nuts back on. After that, So this time we're going to go clockwise. It's going to be the opposite of uh, how we took them off. S usually, you know, if um, clockwise doesn't work, try counterclockwise, especially if you're looking up. But uh, so now we got this guy tightened up. We're going to try it again. It still works. 
Dun, dun, dun. Automatic shutoff works too. Another way you can test the actual mechanism of that. So what happens is you got this weight here, and if you tip it over too much, it hits a lever under here, right? So you just tip that over and test it that way instead of shaking your whole car seat here. Because that's what happens. The car seat here, shake this, falls over, shuts this. That way uh, you don't torture yourself somehow. Next. Oops, yeah, pull this guy off again. This just fits on here. Pull it on. All right, so <clears throat> I'm going to top this bad boy off. Whoops. I recommend always using the handle. This is crazy. Please just need to stick in there. It's not safe to operate your kerosene heater with this grill removed. Then line up the holes. I like to just make sure it's like level and everything looks square and fits nice. Shouldn't have to force anything. Standard screwdriver for this, also known as slotted. And there it is. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to top this guy off with some kerosene that's been treated, and I'm going to let it sit for 60 minutes or longer, and then it's going to be awesome. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a little bit from my mishaps.